Well, hello, my beautiful Sagittarians. Welcome to my channel. This is Baba Jolie here with your yearly reading for 2024. I've already cleansed your space and I've meditated on your cards. For those of you who are returning, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all your wonderful likes, shares, and subscribes. I am truly grateful for all your beautiful energy. Just a little reminder, though, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one -one reading, just so you're aware. Also, please be mindful, scammers are about to pretend to be me and lots of other tarot readers. I do not do personal readings. I do not take your money, e-gifts, donations. Nations. I'm not on Facebook, WhatsApp, PayPal, Telegram, or Patreon. I will never ask you for your credit card details. I will never ask for personal details. And I'll also never give you a cell phone number to call. So if anyone masquerading as me asks for anything at all, please report them or ignore them. It is a scam, okay? Let's move straight on with your reading. I'm going to cleanse your space hourly, so please be mindful there's going to be three loud sounds. Let us begin. <laughs> Okay, my beautiful Sagittarians, this is your yearly reading for 2024. Um, I'm going to get your overarching energy first and then follow it with a month by month look at uh, what's ahead for you. Now, I do want you to be aware of what's going on in terms of planetary alignments. Uh, also, I want to underline uh, that there is a lot of positive energy for the collective to tap into this year, even though some of the alignments are going to be a little bit difficult. So um, I think it's really important to be honest with you to let you know that there could be some bumps in the road this year collectively in terms of world events. However, on a personal level, uh, there is actually uh, more power and more prosperity for you to tap into than uh, the years that we've just experienced. Let's put it this way. Uh, the beginning of 2024 is actually really, really positive, but I thought it's really important to make you aware of all aspects so that you can know when to move forward on something, but also when to sort of hold back a little bit more as well. So I hope you don't mind me uh, telling you both the positive and the negative side of the planetary alignments. Um, none of these things that I say are here to create any sort of paranoia or worry or fear, okay, because fear actually uh, makes us all feel a little bit unwell, let's put it that way, um, and really knocks down our vibrations. So I'm actually here to just make you aware, okay? Uh, now, this year, it will be considered an intense transitional year full of plot twists and exposés, as well as new technological firsts. It'll be a year that's governed by the super serious planet Saturn, okay? The great karmic retribution planet that can throw some tough lessons, challenges, or course corrections our way, but ultimately, it encourages us all to get serious about our life path for our highest good. Now, I've already mentioned one of the most significant and powerful transits occurring on the 20th of January, Pluto moving into the maverick and revolutionary sign of Aquarius. Now, Aquarius energy rules society, social order, people's rights, infrastructure changes, as well as technological advances. And Pluto is also associated with the judgment card, an awakening to connect to your soul on a deeper level, to reset or rebirth in some way. So expect wake-up calls and controversy controversial revelations on a global scale this year. 2024 is set to be a transitional year for major change, and it really is a big deal because Pluto does not change signs regularly. It's often referred to as the generational planet, and the last time Pluto was actually in the sign of Aquarius long term was 1778 to 1798, where we had powerful uprisings in the form of the American and French revolutions. Okay, so uh, maybe a, a small indication of how the collective might be feeling in the years to come. Okay. Okay, uh, this all starts, of course, on the 20th of January. So, uh, you know, I thought it's really important to make you aware. Um, now, this energy is with us right up until 2043. You heard me, 2043, that's a long time. And of course, every planet has a positive and a negative, okay? Uh, on the negative side, of course, uh, we may see, I'm just going to move your cards over there so I can get your uh, yearly uh, cards as well there. 
I'm only telling you what's going on whilst I shuffle your cards because it can take a little bit of a long time there. Uh, but on the negative side, we may see oppressive power plays or restrictions on freedoms of speech, changes in policies, rules and regulations. But on the positive side, we'll potentially see more power to the people moments as Aquarius tends to join society together to exert their free will and say no to things that perhaps they're not happy with rather than tear it apart. Now, last time Pluto actually moved signs long term was in 2008 and it moved into the sign of Capricorn which rules money governments and power structures Pluto can actually be a very destructive force. And in 2008, we saw one of the most notably difficult financial crashes the world has ever witnessed. And whilst Pluto will spend the majority of time in the sign of Aquarius, which is positive, it will retrograde from September to November back into the sign of Capricorn. This could indicate that we might potentially see some sort of crisis moment economically. And as Pluto moves back into Aquarius, this is where we might also see a more global launch of economic technology or something that we have actually never seen before as well coming through there as Pluto's influence in Aquarius actually fast tracks innovation, especially in the realm of technology and AI. Uh, so as always, I like to say it's a perfect time to get into the habit of downloading monthly statements to keep documented proof of what you have in your accounts should there be any gremlins in the system this year. OK, now Pluto also reveals any hidden agendas, wrongdoings or information kept from society or the collective from January the 20th onwards. But do watch out for any distractions sent to, uh, you know, camouflage these potentially controversial moments because they will show up. Uh, ultimately, there is a strengthening this year of community, giving a voice to the collective, a real desire to change the world for a better place, and of course, a yearning to be more independent. And on a personal level, it's really positive because Pluto asks you to see below the surface and not take things at face value. This transition will influence you in a major way to transform your life for the better, reestablish your power, exert your independent nature, do bold and daring things that you've never done before, integrate and spread your wings to fly. And on a psychological level, it will help you break free from negative patterns, uh, you know, self-sabotage traits or self-doubt. And Mercury, planet of communication, starts the year direct, making it a smoother transition into 2024. But unfortunately, at the end of January, it does go retrograde again. Uh, which means there could be a little bit of a bump in the road technology uh, wise. So I would say, you know, save anything that you're working on down, make sure you've got like a copy of it because you never know. OK. And, uh, you know, as Mercury was uh, retrograde, I actually had a major power cut uh, at the end of 2023, which took out electricity and water uh, for me. And of course, you know, uh, luckily a couple of days ago, uh, sorry, a couple of days before I actually kind of uh, saw that I needed like uh, torches and everything by me. So I felt that there was going to be a power cut. I didn't realize the water was going out as well. But luckily, I was covered. Um, but I just want you to be aware, this is a high potential time where you may see a power cut. It won't last for long. I want you to be aware of that. Uh, but do make sure you've got anything by your side just to be organized. OK, um, now, of course, if you're thinking of launching something online this year, it is actually really positive. It's going to be very prosperous. Humanity will actually access clear, logical thinking, and you'll feel more organized to make swift decisions or changes to enable you to reach successful milestones in your life. Uh, planning and strategizing will be at the forefront of your mind as well. And Jupiter, planet of good luck, expansion and opportunity will be in the Earth sign of Taurus. So 2024 might be more money focused, encouraging you to be more mindful of budgets and get serious about your goals with a renewed fire in your soul. And Jupiter also aspects Saturn to start this year, which is truly fortuitous for the collective, adding extra luck. Then Uranus and Jupiter take over to amplify that success energy and opportunities come your way. Good luck overall as well is encouraging you to to seek new knowledge, either through classes online or in person, books, um, and, you know, of course, online downloads as well. Now, uh, with all these shifts and plot twists this year, you may even find, um, you know, a way to be super flexible, to combine all these elements and find new ways of earning money. And especially online, uh, because Aquarius energy really influences that area. Um, also, um, it's about creating security in an ever changing environment this year. You'll uh, feel more important than ever before to create space for mindfulness as well, to connect to nature and focus on your true calling, as well as develop and nurture friendships 
friendships and relationships. Now, there are some bumpy times in 2024, not going to lie to you. You can even feel it yourself. And it's important to watch out for three major events at the end of the year, okay? Uranus retrograding from September, Jupiter retrograding, Remember, Jupiter is uh, good luck and good fortune. It retrogrades from October and then Saturn direct from November. This combination actually occurred at the same time as the financial domino effect in 2008 that I mentioned earlier. So I'm not saying it will, but there is high potential. The circumstances are right to set us all up for a bit of a wobble, maybe even a major wobble at the end of the year. So uh, something to look out for there. Now, ultimately, it's really interesting because you and Scorpio have a tower moment in October. So that kind of tells me that collectively there is a shift and that things kind of change in a major way for society in some way at the end of the year. Uh, but as I was saying, ultimately, the year ahead actually has so much potential for you to tap into. And January is a blueprint to start from, to start reaching higher than ever before. Recognizing true happiness comes from within and then it, of course, spreads outwards in to your everyday life, uh, establishing security, comfort, and prosperity throughout the year. Now, looking at your energy for this year, your personal energy, we got the fourth house, which is all about stability. You're going to be focusing on your home life, uh, maybe a little bit of decluttering, DIY, really like restructuring your world to create a foundation, a sanctuary in some way. And you're going to be spending more time on self-care, family, or people you consider your soul tribe, really connecting to people. And, you know, you know, there's an energy here of, you know, creating a uh, coziness in your life, but not like 100% comfort. And when I say that, um, I feel you know, sometimes comfort can translate as boredom or feeling a little bit stuck in a rut. Uh, I feel like you're going to be cozy. I really feel, you know, there's this energy of like um, making a home, you know, feel like a sanctuary. Also, you know, connecting to your own needs, putting your own needs first. Uh, but also, I feel there's lots of spontaneous moments for you to get out there and explore new things. There's an adventurous energy coming for you uh, this year as well. Um, now, it says here, home, family, roots self-care, childhood, personal foundations, real estate, kitchen, witch, and shelter. Now, the main energy that really shot out of this card uh, when I picked it up was, you know, cooking in a different way, you know, finding either alternative recipes or, you know, really experimenting in the kitchen. This could be through organic substances, herbs, and things like that. Uh, but also, I feel like you're just shaking up um, your diet in some way. Not to say that you're going on a diet, okay? I feel it's just that you are wanting to explore new ways of doing things in life, you know, new adventures to explore cultural sites or places in the world. Uh, also, you know, shake up what you eat. I feel like you're going to find new like recipes, uh, but also, you know, new clothes or new ways of expressing yourself. I really feel this year you've promised yourself that you're going to do stuff that's new. Also, some of you have a high potential to buy property this year. Um, if you're already in a property that you've just purchased, you definitely plant roots there. Um, but I also feel that uh, some of you may even think about going into real estate or you're going to find your forever home this year too. Um, now, also, I feel you're going to really think about who you are, where you're going, and where you've come from. And I'm not just talking about like the last couple of years. I'm talking about your roots. I'm talking about, you know, heritage uh, that will be at the forefront of your mind. Some of you may even like reestablish traditions that your family kind of used to do when you were younger or even like grandparents or guardians, you know, or maybe even like um, traditions that perhaps you have not implemented from your culture. You may bring them back in some way or really like because uh, I feel this energy of tradition about you um, wanting to reestablish some of your traditions, um, but also wanting new. So you have a healthy balance in your life in some way. Uh, of course, the fourth house is also about uh, childhood. So it could be that you revisit uh, experiences from childhood um, in order to get closure on them and recognize that whilst they were important and they shaped who you are, uh, I feel like you recognize that they no longer hold power over your future happiness, especially if they were negative experiences. But also I feel like you're tapping into your inner child, that playfulness, that wonderful Sagittarian um, energy where you're witty and you're exciting to be with and you're open hearted and you know, you just are curious about what the world has to offer. You may feel that 
um, you know, you've been a little bit dormant for a while in some way, and I feel like you're shaking things up, but also from a very secure position. So I feel like you're not being like careless with uh, the way the you run your life, shall we say. I feel like you are creating security in your life, focusing on your money, your pensions, your savings plans, repayment plans, because the fourth house is all about money as well. It's about your acquisitions. So you're going to be thinking about fortune and how you can accumulate more. Some of you may even decide to work from home or set up a business from home or even you know launch an idea or business with uh, people that you consider your family or soul tribe this year and it'll be very very lucrative long term because this year for you is all about attracting wealth but also you're in a go-getting spirit your overarching energy is like off the charts for that okay now we do have the ninth house here so a lot of you are going to be developing your spiritual gifts or paying more attention to your inner world uh, your inner wisdom your intuition and you know you're going to have a lot of mystical vision and I know that sounds really like woo woo but you're going to have high like bursts of knowingness trust that knowingness I mean some of you you know, if you're into the occult, you may like go on, you know, like those TV programs like ghost hunts and things like that. That's coming through here. I can see it in the water with I'm not here to advertise anybody's show or anybody's product or anything like that. But I'm seeing like a high profile person who goes off, um, you know, doing all the ghost hunt things. Um, they've got glasses. That's all I'm going to say about that person um, or that show. Uh, but, you know, you may involve yourself in that or you may watch documentaries on the unknown or the mysteries of life or even develop your spiritual gifts through meditation scrying to row. Um, I also see that you're going to have lots of messages this year from people in spirit, your ancestors who've walked before, okay? Uh, because they're guiding you heavily this year. I mean, they guide you all the time, but you're going to be more aware of their presence this year because I feel like they are guiding you towards peace, uh, but also to live your life to the fullest, to live in the moment. I mean, literally, um, you know, when I was... Um, deciding to do the yearlies, I had to go through, of course, all the t-shirts and sweaters that I have. And this one literally like jumped out at me and was like, this is the one. And it's like, enjoy the moment. And I definitely see that that is something that you're embracing this year as well. Now it says here foreign travel. So as I said, I really feel like you're being guided to either where you feel like you belong to plant roots. So some of you may be thinking about emigrating or uh, relocating somewhere. It doesn't have to be another country, but it could be. Um, and some of you are like, you know what, I just want to travel more. I just want to see more. I want to absorb, you know, everything that the world has to offer. I feel like you have a really, you know, curious lust for life this year. And of course, you're going to pay close attention to your responsibilities and your tasks and live within your means and your resources. But at the same time, you're going to find time for a little bit more excitement. And it says foreign travel, long journeys, wisdom, law, learning, adventure, rituals, foreigners, um, uh, spirituality and religion. OK, so reaffirming your beliefs, but also uh, perhaps looking at how other people and their traditions, um, how they govern their life or how they influence uh, for the positive and the negative because everything has an opposite and I feel like you're observing you know how collectively we may you know do things a little bit differently but at the same time there is a oneness about the world and how we feel about humanity so I feel you are really connected this year as well but I see lots of little adventures for you this year and a real connect to spirituality and your belief system reaffirming we have the gibbous moon wonderful this is incredible I mean your cards are really awesome you have, you're close to achieving your goal. Final phase before completion. Some tweaking needs to be done. Pay close attention or extra attention. Details and focus. And I definitely see that, you know, for a lot of you, um, especially if you have Scorpio placements, uh, because, you know, Scorpio... And even if you don't, I feel like there's like a correlation there as well to some degree because you're so close in uh, signs on the Zodiac. Um, you know, we've got the hangman and the high priestess for you at the beginning of the year. Now, Scorpio had the high priestess and the hangman, so in different um, areas. So it feels very much like the start of your year, whilst you're going to be very busy and productive, you're going to be absorbing a lot of knowledge. So some of you maybe uh, have already booked classes to do throughout the year or 
You've been looking at how you can learn more. Some of you may have decided that you're going to join a book club or you're opening yourself up to reading more or just spending time looking at facts and figures. I definitely get a sense here that you're easing your way into the year and major change comes for you in the month of March. And then you really have this uh, focus, this drive, this attention to detail, that this determination to get going on um, maybe something that you've been formulating or ruminating on at the beginning of the year. Because I feel like some of you are strategizing or opening yourself up to new ideas of how you can change your life for the better. But you're definitely really close to reaching your goal. And it's a very exciting time. You're going to see lots of things popping out of nowhere for you. Uh, surprise. The element of surprise is what they're giving me for this year for you. Uh, expect the unexpected, but in a good way, okay? I mean, of course, we're going to get to the month of October there because for some reason, everybody's getting a bit of a, a tower moment in October. And when it starts happening more than once, we all know it's not coincidence, right? It could be a collective energy, something we're going to experience in the world at that moment. But I will get to that in a moment for you. As well. Now we do have the rider there, very positive energy. This is that go getting spirit. Uh, also, this is an energy of like good news, messages coming through really quick movement. Uh, this year is actually going to go quite fast for you, but ultimately I feel like you're gaining new information and then you're taking action on it, okay? Uh, the rider, it's really important. It's number one, which connects to the magician card. So as I said, things really take off for you in April in particular. Now that does sound like it's really far away and don't get me wrong, things Major things are happening for you at the beginning of the year as well. But I feel, you know, this is a year that you'll look back on April in particular and think, wow, everything kind of changed in a really positive way. And I feel there's even someone new who comes into your life in the month of April. Okay, now this could be uh, someone who is going to be a friend long term. It could be, uh, you know, uh, someone who is integral to your journey in terms of spiritual development or even in terms of love or even in terms of business or community in some way. So I feel there's a, a meeting, uh, someone new entering in April, and they are a welcome addition to your life. Okay, so we will get there when we get there, but I feel uh, there is like an energy of arrival. Also, some of you may see family members or friends you haven't seen for a while in the month of April or even this year. I feel like some of you are opening yourself up to uh, making sure that you reconnect in some way, especially if you've been living a little bit off grid or in hermit mode for a while. This is a card of like getting out there. But also I feel like you're moving forward on a spiritual quest this year, okay? Especially since we got number nine there and number one. You're putting your own needs first in a healthy way and you're reestablishing healthy boundaries. But at the same time, I feel like you have a quest for the other, in life, okay? You know, the mysterious stuff that perhaps uh, science can't explain or, uh, you know, humans can't explain. I feel, you know, that knowingness within you, I feel like you're exploring it a little bit more. Of course, you are a sign, my beautiful Sagittarians, where you like facts and figures as well. So you're actually going to find the balance in it. So if, for example, you come across like a scientific study and you're like, okay, um, there's this information out there. I want to find the truth of it. You may actually uh, open yourself up to other knowledge. Uh, so, for example, if your friend said that they experienced something or you even experienced something that is not explainable, you may try to find an explanation through facts and figures and science and things like that. And you will come across like uh, some sort of document or uh experiment where it kind of backs up your theory. Uh, that's a really odd thing to come through right now, but that's what's coming through there. So I have to mention it. Okay. Now, moving on to your January, uh, this is the hangman. So this is new knowledge. So I definitely get a sense that some of you may be putting yourself on a course of learning, but also things that you were putting on hold or delayed are going to get done in January. Whether it's cleaning out that closet that you haven't done for a while, whether it's fix that hinge on that door that's been creaking for a bit, this is a month where you're really focused on getting stuff done that you've put on hold or delayed or just haven't had time to do because you've been so busy. Also, the hangman, the hangman puts himself on the tree of life in order to gain new knowledge. So I definitely see that you you are uh, reflecting on what you need in your life this year and really putting yourself out there to go get it or to find it and read it or absorb it in some way. Now also, um, 
this card, I'm getting a real energy of relaxing into the year, okay? Uh, I feel like you're really um, making sure that you stick to your intentions and to your goals and dreams, but at the same time, you're not putting yourself under pressure to do it. Because sometimes, you know, if we put ourselves under pressure, that's when we find temptation comes back to, uh, you know, connect us to the thing that we're trying to avoid. Uh, for example, if you decide that you're going to cut out coffee for a month, right? And, um, you are like, okay, I'm going to do this. You do have very strong willpower, but also when we decide to cut something out completely from our life, okay, say if you said, I'm going to cut out coffee for the rest of my life, that's when your body goes into survival mode and says, no, but we need it, but we need it. You can't, you can't deprive us of that caffeine hit. We need it. Okay. So I feel like you're really easing yourself into things. Some of you may decide to only have a little of what you fancy and sort of like almost um, down downgrade it in your world into the point where uh, you no longer need it. When the body says, you know what, I don't really crave this anymore. So I'm actually seeing you look at things in a healthy way where you kind of like don't cut something out completely because you are like almost like the only energy I've got is like you're disintegrating the crave. I know that sounds really weird. It's almost like you're just dampening those cravings for things that perhaps you feel have not been helping your life because you want to create a little bit more balance into your world. Um, also, I'm going to pull a card on the hangman because this can indicate that January is still a necessary time out because I feel 2023 was really busy for you. You really burnt out and you needed that extra time for reflection, extra time to recharge your batteries and really get to understand what you want to do with life this year, but also to get back into the flow of things, okay? So let me pull a card on that hangman for you. Uh, thank you so much, Spirit Guys, Going Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Sagittarians? What do they need to know? Can you please guide them? We've got the Five of Pentacles. Okay. Uh, five of Pentacles. Things that are like, um, you know, not really working in your world. Uh, five of Pentacles can indicate something that perhaps, um, you know, was difficult and difficult to give up. And I feel like you're definitely like easing it out of your life in some way. Also, Five of Pentacles can indicate some of you perhaps have been a little bit unwell and needed to take things easy over the uh, transition period from December into January. And it just feels like you're getting back into the flow. Okay. Um, also, Five of Pentacles, some of you may have overextended yourself financially in 2023 in some way, and now you're taking control of your finances. And you're definitely looking at uh, budgeting in some way there as well. Um, Five of Pentacles is like an alternative form of abundance. It's actually seeing where uh, you can help yourself in certain areas. Uh, we got the judgment card. So yeah, you're, you're, you're taking stock of things. There's a self-evaluation period here where you're looking at the things that you want that you do not have, and you're looking at the things that you have that you do not want. So there's really like a decluttering energy going on here for you as well. Now, uh, the Five of Pentacles, uh, this can indicate, especially if you're going through like old boxes of things that you just want to uh, put out to, uh, you know, charity or uh, things that you are reselling in some way, it may throw up some memories of past situations that could cause your heartstrings to be... Um, a little bit sad. You know, when you look at stuff that, um, especially if someone broke your heart in the past, for example, you may come across like a photograph or a letter and suddenly, you know, decluttering, you know, you've been in the flow of like organizing everything and suddenly you hit that one thing that makes you go, oh, and then you sit with it for a little while and you look at it for a while and think, you know what, we were really good together until that person did that. Or I wish that I could have had that conversation with that person. There's there's an there's a memory attached to this card for some reason, and that's not normally what the Five of Pentacles means. So I'm really feeling it coming through. So I have to uh, let you know uh, that that's what's coming through there as well for you. Okay, but I feel you know sometimes the universe shifts our perspective to teach us lessons about certain things, and I feel that the calling is strong in you this year to implement those lessons and really live your life to your full potential. Uh, also, I feel something that got cut short in your world quite quickly, okay? I feel um, you are aware of the lesson that uh, was meant to be learnt and it's actually fueled your path in some way. It's almost like you're turning pain to gain and it could be that suddenly you have like an idea for a new project uh, and I'm just giving you an example. For example, if you uh, went through a period of um, you know, 
um, having heartbreak or attracting the wrong person or if you had some difficulty in your work environment or in the community, some of you may actually channel that experience that story into a book, into a screenplay, into a piece of art. There's a real cathartic energy here as well. So some of you are using that and you may find that uh, your talents, your gifts, because you're highly gifted, um, you can turn that into a lucrative financial um, income. Okay, is what I see there, even though it may not have started that way at the first. Now, as you can see what I was saying earlier about cutting something short, okay, it's almost like something in its prime or like even an addiction full in its prime. If you cut it short, then you could have difficulty with it because the Five of Pentacles is a card of difficulty. So I feel it's like easing yourself into giving something up or easing yourself into getting closure on something. You know, um, sometimes, especially, uh, you know, us spiritual people, we say, you know, you're getting closure and you're just cutting something out. And actually, it's harder than we think, you know, many, many years it takes sometimes to really get closure on something. So I feel you're taking the time with it and being really mature and recognizing that everything doesn't have to be fast tracked. It can be an ease process where you actually go, you know what, I'm just going to reflect on this and see what my lesson is here or how I can do things differently so that it can benefit me. Now, this month also is a time where you really look at your life's purpose path, the calling. It's strong in you this year to really get on um, your mission, but also to reflect on the path ahead. So you're really deciding to reach for a new life and you must purge, okay? This is a, a month of purging, of purity. And that's not just in terms of like getting into an exercise routine or a sleeping pattern. I mean, if you really look at the Five of Pentacles, it can indicate some of you have had sleeping problems, you're up all night, and there may be something in your nighttime routine that needs to be cut out, whether it's like uh, scrolling on your phone right up until after midnight or 3 a.m. or whatever it is, or whether it's like electronic devices or even eating before bed, whatever it is for you. It's going to be different for everybody, of course. I'm just giving you some examples. I feel like you may be looking at your sleeping patterns, but also the judgment card indicates if you're reaching for a new life, it means an end to old ways, releasing restrictions, anything that's been holding you back, also breaking old habits. And I definitely see that January is the month for you to do that. And you're certainly decluttering your home space or decluttering your life in general. And the judgment card indicates you you understand what you need to do. Okay, you know, but the direction is calling you as well. And this could also be in terms of you being really honest and open about your finances and finding alternative ways to increase it. So some of you may actually decide to uh, pick up a new job or a second stream of income or even use your creative skills to create uh, a stream of income that will be very lucrative for you. And if you've come from 2023 and you were made redundant or um, you have uh, in some way not been able to find work in 2023, I feel 2024 is actually a very good year for you to find a job that really resonates with who you are and your skill set as well as the paycheck, okay? Um, now, uh, don't get me wrong, 2024 is going to be very difficult. We may see on a collective level uh, more redundancies or hear about them, but there's still opportunity out there, okay? I know there's going to be a lot of like clickbait in the news and, you know, there's going to be a lot of like uh, scaremongering and things like that. And, you know, there are going to be some moments of real hardship for people. Totally see that happening. But also, this is uh, an energy that is governed by Aquarius, which means innovation. You turn your life around in order to work in a different way and increase your finances. So this is a great year for you to tap into more money, okay? Especially since Taurus is also on our side um, and Jupiter. So yeah, this is a great year to increase your finances, especially the first half of the year. Now, your February, we've got um, the High Priestess. So this is really about taking those classes. Some of you may have booked them in January and they're happening in February, or, you know, they extend into uh, the month of February as well there. But this is ultimately about, um, you know, you tapping into your inner knowledge, developing your spiritual wisdom, but also I'm getting an energy here of you having a project that you keep to yourself. You're working behind the scenes on something, and you're waiting until it becomes uh, something that is finalized before you reveal it. Um, also, the High Priestess indicates that 
you're implementing your spiritual practices and I feel like you're trusting your vibes and I feel like there's major personal development and growth here. Some of you may actually take a spiritual retreat or you spot one that you want to save for. You may spot it in the month of uh, February and then you may actually take it later on in the year, especially around about June time. Uh, I see that happening there. June, July, I would say there as well. But um it's really interesting that we had the Five of Pentacles come out for this card, um, for the um, Hangman card, and it was like a rose that had been cut short or, you know, stopped blossoming. And then we've got this flower blossoming, this rose blossoming right there as well. So it indicates that anything that you feel was a missed opportunity or something that got cut short for you, it returns in a better form and it's more um, rewarding, but also more emotionally fulfilling than ever before as well. So let me pull a card on that High Priestess for you. Um, thank you so much, Spirit Guides, God Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Sagittarians? What do they need to know? Can you please guide them for their highest good? Also, they're giving me an energy, um, yeah, like a quick getaway. You know, I'm just getting this energy of travel from there. So as I said, spiritual retreat, but it may be something that you book. It could be something you actually physically do in February, but I feel um, there is some sort of movement going on there in that month for you. Uh, they're also giving me 111, okay, for you, 111. Now, um, I feel it actually correlates with um, we have the uh, 11th of January that is a very strong portal for opportunity so some of you something that you do on the 11th of January you could hear really good news or accomplish it in February so whether you're putting yourself on a course and getting a qualification or certification or if you are um, actually waiting to hear on something that has been delayed I feel suddenly it comes in for you and you celebrate I mean the chariot card is a card of triumph it's a card of um, you know your dedication your determination your commitment to your goals and your dreams and having confidence recognizing that actually you're making progress in some area of your life as well. It's a very fast paced month, even though, you know, I feel like you're creating that inner calmness whilst around you, there may be a lot of like fluctuations. Uh, you know, I feel like you're trying to be in the rhythm of life in some way. And uh, yeah, King of Cups, you're following your heart. Uh, it could be that you launch something that you love, but also this is a card that indicates you may step into a leadership position, uh, have a, a bonus, a raise, a promotion during this time. But ultimately, it's about knowing your worth and being really comfortable in your own skin. You know, sometimes um, people talk about managing our emotions, okay? Now, I always say our emotions are there, they're healthy, they're there for a reason. You know, if you feel anger, it's because your body is telling you that something's not right, that you're frustrated with something and something needs to change. There needs to be an outlet, a channel for, you know, pent up energy. And, uh, you know, even when you see like an animal in a cage, you know, they move back and forth, back and forth. They're really frustrated. And if you went in that cage with them after that, they would probably maul you because they're really angry. They've been stuck in some way. They've not been living their true authentic life. And I feel that's you. You're like, I want want to be living my true authentic life and I feel like you're recognizing that you know emotions are super healthy you know it's great to cry it releases pressure it's uh, I don't feel like you have anything to cry about but I in this month in particular but what I see here is that you are recognizing that your emotions um, you know they do not overwhelm you they are there to uh, signify what needs to change or what's good in your life and you're trusting your intuition and you're in the flow. Also, I mean, this is a major arcana card, which means you're on the move. You may have a big decision to make in the month of February, but you're super focused and the decision you make is the right one. And some of you may go on a quick trip somewhere, or you may even purchase a car in this month. Uh, there's a strong potential for that there as well. Use your intuition. If the price seems too good to be true, get it looked over by somebody else who's in a, you know, a position of authority to know these things. But if you know cars, I mean, I don't know anything about cars, but if you do know cars or motor vehicles, you know, motorcycles or whatever it is, because wheels, you know, I feel like, you know, you, you have a strong potential to purchase something with wheels in this month. Um, it's worth getting someone to look over it. But I feel actually you're going to find a better deal because I feel that initially you're first, even though it seems too good to be true, right? I just feel like there's something off about, uh, you know, a, a vehicle that is just a little bit like 
below the average price. It feels maybe the first car you look at, but then the second one, you see that actually um, car prices and um, vehicles in general, the prices are going down. So you'll see that actually there's a, another opportunity. And I feel like it's because you wait a little bit that you find a better deal, better mileage, better uh, quality year car, but also um, I feel like it's in tip top condition. Okay, so that's coming out there as well. Now, this is also a perfect time to dream big. The King of Cups here, as you can see, is launching the big ship. Ships represent your journey, uh, represent moving forward. Could also represent travel, okay? So it could be long distance travel. Even though it's a quick trip, I feel like it could be at a distance. So, um, you know, there may be like a quick flight somewhere. Um, but I also get an energy of change and you following your heart. I mean, there is also the potential there for you to find a property that you are really interested in, that you would love to live in that area. So if you are looking to shake up uh, your life a little bit and your environment, I feel February could be a really great month to do that. And you may find a place that you really like, but at the same time, I feel like you don't really uh, finalize any purchase until August. I know that sounds such a long process, but I feel like um, there may be some stipulations or something, you know, some sort of process you have to go through before you seal the deal because August is all about contracts for you and signing things and making things real. It could also be a time where, you know, you hear about a promotion or a raise and you step into a new role if you're in a career. And I feel like, you know, you are getting more status, more responsibility, but you're going to absolutely love what you do, okay? You are a natural born leader. You are great at taking charge, but you don't let power go to your head. So I definitely see that you'd be the sort of person who would be great to lead a team or even set up your own entrepreneurship, set up your own boss, maybe set up your own boss status is what I meant, or maybe even like do something creative that will really put you ahead of the curve and actually put you into a position where where uh, people notice your skill set there as well. But if you're stepping into a leadership role, there may be like a probationary period and it becomes finalized in August, okay? So it could be that there's a longer than usual probationary period. Normally they're about three months, I mean, maybe six months. So maybe it's, yeah, I feel you don't really like sign the official papers until later on in the year is what I'm seeing there. Um, now, it's a very positive month though because there's some great news coming in February for you, something that you will celebrate. The Chariot card is, you know, a major arcana card of triumph, of victory, of success, making progress and having the confidence to go the distance. And as you move into March, there are some big changes here, okay? This is about one door closing and another door opening. So if you are stepping into a leadership position, um, it means that you're leaving something that you used to do, moving into something new. Same with property. You know, if you're leaving one area, you're moving into another. So this feels like a revolving door kind of month. I feel like you're going to be super busy, but also... I feel like you're being really practical. I feel like you are, um, you know, starting something big, something new there. It could be that you're launching that idea or that business there. You're making space for greater opportunities. And it's the beginning. It feels almost like the beginning of your year. Okay. It's really weird. Uh, each sign this year seems to have like a different timeline for the beginning of the year for them. It's almost like, you know, every sign really isn't thinking of, you know, January as being the beginning of the year. It feels for you, March, that's when things really start happening for you. And you really start feeling like, yeah, 2024 has officially begun. So, you know, when there's that period where you write stuff down or you say the year 2024 and sometimes by accident you say the previous year like 2023 oh I mean 24 I haven't got into the flow of saying it yet maybe it's that energy I'm not sure but March you really establish some sort of change in your life that um brings happiness because um, the death card, as you can see there, this cockerel, you know I'm getting an energy and I see an image right now as well of a um Pocket watch, okay, pocket watch. So I feel like you're being more time efficient. You're really acutely aware of time and not wanting to waste it. You're not procrastinating. You're really focused and ambitious to get stuff done. Um, but as you can see there, that cockerel, I mean, the cockerel tends to, you know, be the alarm clock right in the morning, right? You know, wake up call. Um, and of course, it's got a scythe there. And that scythe is there to um, landscape your environment in some way to nurture, uh, you know, almost like deadhead the roses. 
Okay, cut out anything that's uh, preventing growth and also to eradicate any of those clouds. It's high enough to eradicate the clouds that are around the sun. And I definitely see that you are uh, trying to cut out anything that's negative, toxic situations, people, you know, codependency, uh, people who are passive aggressive, all that kind of energy. I really feel like you're looking at situations in your life, even food substances you know, or even like environments where you feel, you know what, it drains my energy or it makes me feel low vibe or I just don't feel like I want to do that anymore. I really feel like you're being honest and open with yourself and changing your life in some way for the better. Now, let me just pull a card on that death card for you. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides and Angels. Can you please guide? Um, also, they're giving me, and by they, I mean my guides, they're giving me that 13 you know, whilst it is unlucky for some, I mean, the death card is number 13. Uh, I mean, death card means, you know, nothing ever truly dies. It transforms into something else. Okay, energy, you know, it transitions, it goes somewhere. Um, so I feel like, you know, uh, my guides are actually giving me that number 13 is going to be really super lucky for you this year. Okay, so um, a random message to come in there. Justice. Okay, good karma coming on in and, um, you know, balance, harmony, but being really honest, you know, cutting out anything that is not necessary in your life or has overstayed its welcome in your life in some way. I mean, the justice card is about cause and effect, okay? There are some things that I feel, for example, if you've tried to, like, decrease something that you have been uh, addicted to or you felt like you couldn't do without it. You know, some people say they're going to do dry January. Maybe that you're going to do like semi dry January. Uh, and then like when you get to March, you've cut it out completely. Okay, so I really feel that energy coming through there as well. But um, when we've got the uh, justice card, this can also indicate that you have a lot of like paperwork to adhere to, administrative tasks. So for some of you, it could be tax time, for example, or you're getting your uh, affairs in order in some way to get organized um, and really stay on top of things. I definitely see that you are going to be on top of things there with this card and this energy that's coming through. Um, but I feel like you are... Um, Maybe having to deal with something legal as well. I mean, it could be a contract. It could be, um, let me just pull one more card. Um, thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide? Okay. Now, just to let you know, I'm picking the upright and the reversals in this deck. I just want you to be aware of that. I've just been given a message from my guides to do that on this occasion. So, Magician card and the Nine of Swords. Okay, so the Nine of Swords is in the reverse. So I'm so glad, actually, that my guide said, you know, only read, um, you know, the reversals and the uprights rather than just the uprights, which is what I've been doing recently. Because the Nine of Swords actually indicates there's nothing to worry about. Okay, it means that you're fully coming into your power. It, um, so, for example, you may stick up for something that you feel is right during this month, uh, whether it's like, uh, you know, some sort of dispute with a neighbor, you may say your truth and say, actually, you know what, I'm not accepting this anymore. It may even be you standing up to a boss or a member of the community. I feel like you're going to be very diplomatic because I don't see any anger here. I don't see any like argument here. I actually see you diplomatically finding a way to put someone in their place and say, I'm establishing a boundary, don't cross it. And I definitely see with the nine of swords, uh, you're getting better sleep as well. So whatever it is you're cutting out completely, it really impacts your sleeping patterns and you have better sleep uh, from then onwards. Now also uh, with the nine of swords in the resistance position there, it can indicate recovery, okay, getting rejuvenated. So if you have been unwell as you've moved into the year, whether it's, uh, you know, something that has been draining your energy, uh, it could be like a seasonal uh, cold, or it could be like uh, something physical, it could be like, um, you know, some sort of uh, back injury, or, you know, uh, could be like uh, some sort of like cough. Uh, I'm just getting all of it, right? I'm not getting anything specific right now. If you've been unwell, I feel, you know, there is a new lease of life as you move into March, almost like it's not going to return. Okay, so uh, some of you may actually find a practitioner to help you with that, or you're just going a little bit easier on yourself and you get back to best. Um, also, I feel like you're tying up loose ends on something this month. I feel you're making some adjustments in your life to have more energy big time. Um, the Magician card is all about focus. It's about potential. It's about using 
all cylinders in terms of your energy to get up and go. Also, I feel like you're looking at your talents and your skill set. And, you know, sometimes when we're about to achieve something truly great, because I feel like whatever this is, it sets you up for the next month, which actually is the magician card. Okay. Um, so I feel, you know, when you're about to do something great, sometimes doubt can come on in and, you know, has the power to make us feel a little bit like, can I do this? What if I fail? What if it doesn't go right? You know, I feel like you're quietening that inner critic this year and saying, you know what? I believe in myself. I feel like you're backing yourself. You are betting on you. And I feel like you're right to because you're going to accomplish so much this year. Now, of course, success looks differently for everybody. For some people, success is not being unwell. Okay. For some, it is like lots of money. It's uh, accomplishing goals. It could be decluttering that closet or that shed that you've been meaning to for years. Whatever it is that you are focused on, you will achieve and you'll be so proud of yourself. Now, as we move into the month of April, this is a high powered month for you to attract your goals and dreams. You're turning those visions into reality. The magician card indicates something that you've been manifesting shows up for you. And also you're in the flow of doing. So uh, I feel uh, April and May, so April and May, yeah, definitely April and May, but also March, I feel are going to be very busy months for you. Uh, I feel April and May are going to be a little bit busier than usual. That's the energy that's coming out there as well. Um, the Magician card also indicates you've got this. You're in control of your life in some way. Things are getting a bit interesting. There is uh, spontaneous energy there. So you may be going out, have a little bit more invitations. I feel like you have also like booked stuff throughout the year in your diary already that you want to do. But I feel like there's more in April for you to do there as well. Now, the Magician card can also indicate some of you or, and I know this sounds really woo-woo, there's going to be an opportunity or something that just turns out in your favor. It's like suddenly it just works, okay? It's like a lucky break. It almost makes you believe in magic, okay? Because it's something that, you know when people go, oh my gosh, you know, it just isn't possible to turn out that way and yet it did for the positive. And I feel there's something that you are going to have as an experience in the month of April that it like defies logic, but at the same time, it's so exciting. Okay, King of Wands, passion, power. Now this could be a spark between you and someone. Now don't get me wrong, there is infinite potential for you to meet a soulmate if you're looking for love this year, um, and you could meet them in any month, but I feel um, the strong month for you to meet somebody or even like, you know, see that you're in a serious relationship with someone. So for example, if you meet someone in January or February, you know, you may actually realize there's more to this relationship than just, you know, um, an attraction there. And you could start to establish a relationship with someone. There's a spark. Okay. So, I mean, the fact that we've got Aries energy in the magician card and we've got Aries energy in the king of wands energy, this could indicate that you are highly, um, you know, passionate or connected to someone who has a lot of chemistry with you and they have strong Aries in their chart, okay? Because we move into the month of May with the lover's card, this can indicate it is love. This is a soulmate. Um, and I feel that you and this person, I mean, there's a high potential for you to move in with this person or get married to this person. Now, if you are already with a partner, I see April and May as being high potential months for you to either, um, you know, have your person pop the question or um, to discuss marriage or settling down or moving in with each other in some way. And if you're already married with this person and you've already settled down, some of you may renew your vows or you may actually decide to um, make some major lifestyle changes. And I feel it only strengthens your relationship. It could be a move, it could be that you buy property abroad or you actually uh, have a holiday home or you go on some sort of adventure because I feel like it's a high powered month where you are energized and you're influencing your life for the positive. I mean, this card, when I apply it to your energy as well, my beautiful Sagittarians, this means that you are passionate, you're leading with uh, expressing yourself, you're getting stuff done, you're happening to life. This is a card of influencing your circumstances and aligning yourself with your goals and dreams, marching to the beat of your own drum, being independent, but also this is about you not being closed off to new ideas. So you may actually launch something new um, or, you know, you are um, really like 
as I said, there's some sort of leadership energy going on with you this year, but it could be that you're just taking control of your life in a different way and you have so much vitality and motivation to get stuff done because I feel this year is totally going to be different from the last year that you've just experienced and there's high energy. Also, uh, the King of Wands is a very powerful position. So I feel like any changes you want to make, I feel like you are uh, capable of making them, making great decisions. And some of these decisions may be like a risk, okay? Because the King of Wands is pretty sensible most of the time, but um, does open up to the occasional risk or, uh, you know, the occasional leap of faith, shall we say. So I definitely see that um, some of you could like launch an entrepreneurial ship this year and be very, very uh, lucrative indeed. And I feel it's something very exciting. This is a card of excitement, of passion. So a great month in April for you to take charge and um, either launch something or really establish yourself doing something. I feel like you conquer something in th these months, okay? It just feels like you're conquering it. Now, as you move into the month of May, okay, we have the lover's card. So the lover's card used to be called the choice. So I feel you have a big decision to make in the month of uh, May. And I feel following your heart, it's a no big deal. I feel you're actually deciding I'm going to follow my heart no matter what. And I feel that puts you in the right position. Trust your intuition. That's why you're developing your intuition strongly at the beginning of the year, because you do have to make this big decision in May. And you're so ready to tap into that inner awareness and say, this is the right path for me. And you take it. And you know, this is when you come into your own in the next month, because we have this Sagittarian card of temperance there. So it's like you know what is right for you and you're not living on anyone else's terms. You're living your life on your own terms and there is an independence energy here about you. For some of you, it may be that you leave uh, you know, your family home in order to set up independent living or maybe move in with like flatmates, friends, or you may even launch an independent business or you're going to change your life and the way you live your life in some way to do some sort of independent living. Uh, now, of course, the lover's card, it does connect to love. So this is a high potential month for you establishing a relationship or connecting to a soulmate or even, you know, reestablishing that spark in a relationship that is already present. The lover's card, though, is a high law of attraction card, okay? What is in your heart? What is in your mind? You can have in your hand, okay? And because you've got the magician card, which is strong manifestation skills, you attracting what you desire, the month of uh, May sees it show up for you. Okay, so whatever it is you're really desiring or putting your focus on, because you're going to be very, um, you know, super focused, very productive in the month of um, April there, I feel like you attract it. It shows up in June. It's like May, June, you see it like show up for you. Um, I know this is May here, but I feel, you know, it's actually established in June. So it shows up. So you could get the news, for example, um, if you've been trying to uh, get the local district to like change a speeding sign, for example, to lower the speeding uh, sign in your area because you're worried that the cars are going too fast. Um, you may have been going through this process for a a while. You may hear that it is successful and that it has been approved that you have won the case, for example, and I'm just giving these things as an example, and then it actually gets implemented and shows up in June. So I hope you understand what I mean by the process where, you know, something that you see in your mind, you can have in your hand, it's like you get the good news of it in the month of May, but it actually gets established in June, okay? Um, also with the lover's card, this is about, you know, focusing on your health, um, what is right for you, um, implementing self-care routines. And, you know, I feel like you're strengthening your partnerships in this month. This could be people who are already present in your life, uh, siblings or soul tribe members, family members, very family oriented uh, month this one as well. So you may take a trip to see your family or there may be some sort of reunion that goes on there as well. And some of you may even set up a business partnership. Uh, let me get my teeth back in my mouth there. A business partnership in that month. And um, I feel both of you are on the same page there as well. We got the world card. So uh, the world card is really about finding your place in the world, but it's also about 
reaching a goal, okay? Uh, I mean, it can be that you complete a cycle and that you're opening yourself up to something new again. But ultimately, you know, with the world card and your next card being the temperance card, it's like being in the flow of balance, harmony. Things are going smoothly in your world, you know, paying bills, making sure you're on top of things, making sure that you're doing what is right in your heart. I really feel that you know, sometimes people overlook the everyday where we need to make sure that we're in the flow of simplicity, you know, making sure that we're on top of our projects or our uh, paperwork or, you know, our bills, our repayment plans. And, you know, sometimes people can think that's just boring, but actually it's necessary. And I feel like you really are in the flow of making sure everything is working um, like clockwork in your world. And it just gives you a sense of pride that you're on top of things. But also the world card tells me that uh, some of you have a yearning to be someplace. So you could be uh, thinking about where you feel like you belong in the world. Some of you may want to emigrate and it may not be this year. It may be something that you're thinking about long term. You may be thinking about places that you want to retire to later on. Or if you are uh, deciding this year is the year for retirement, I feel like it opens you up to the whole world of travel and you use your resources pretty effectively to make sure that you have enough money in your pocket at the same time you're experiencing what the world has to offer. So it's a very exciting time for you. Um, I mean, I will do like a major card to see about money because what I see here is you attracting more and keeping like stability. Okay, so I feel like you're just keeping on top of things. There is a nice little increase in finances for you this year, um, but I feel that you're just in the flow of balance and keeping things simple. Um, also, the world card is about the right opportunities heading your way because you're in the right place at the right time to get what you truly deserve and desire. There's an energy of satisfaction here, okay, fulfillment. And I do see that this is a month where you'll travel as well. So some of you, not all of you, uh, if you are already connected to someone long distance, I feel you or this person, you may go to visit each other this month, okay? Um, and uh, of course, if you've never like met this person before, I feel you'll meet this person in a communal event. Um, it could be like, uh, you know, a festival or it could be um, like uh, some sort of destination where people come together to celebrate something. I feel like you meet this person uh, where there's other people around is what I see there. And this person, I see them being a soulmate. Okay. So um, very important there too. But I'm being drawn highly to the map. So it's almost like a check-in month where you have to make a decision. I mean, some of you, there is definitely travel there. Um, but I also see it's more about your place in the world and where you feel like you belong. And I feel also that there is a high potential for temptation this month. And this could be with a person. So I feel actually that you see that you've learned the lesson. So if there's someone in your world who comes into your life, promises you everything, delivers nothing, I feel actually there's no more temptation there. Um, there's an energy of breaking the spell. And that definitely showed up uh, briefly in the Scorpio reading as well. So there's a correlation there. Uh, King of Wands, I feel like you've, by then you've met someone else. Okay, so you don't even look back at someone like... Because there's someone here who's an Aries who's going to play a very important role in your life. So if you are looking for love, um, you know, this is someone who's passionate, who is intense. Uh, yeah, I mean, someone who's a soulmate. Uh, but also there's someone who wants to reunite with you. Four of Wands is a reunite card, okay? It could be someone who is uh, physically highly attracted to you, who um, is not really... Um, you know, putting as much effort into things as they should. Uh, they're not emotionally available to do that. I feel like by then, though, you've met someone else, someone who, you know, raises you up, someone who thinks the world of you. Uh, and if you're in a high level commitment or even married, there may be someone from your past who, um, you know, tries to reignite a spark within you. But I feel like, you know, this person, they don't hold any power to you anymore. It's literally like the spell has been broken and you're really happy where you're at. Okay. So that's the energy that I've got coming through there as well. Now, Four of Wands, really great news month for you. Okay. Four of Wands is celebration. I also see invitations. So um, if you are looking for love, I feel, you know, you're going to get a lot of invitations uh, around about April, May time. Definitely, you know, uh, say yes to as much as possible, you know, if it interests you, of course, if it doesn't interest you, don't go to it. But uh, I feel, you know, be open to the potential and possibility there because I feel um, there's a high potential for you to meet love if you're looking for love. Um, but also opportunity, 
Okay, networking. Uh, I mean, the four of wands is really about um, letting your hair down, having a good time. Uh, it's almost like springtime. I mean, of course, it depends on where you are in the world. But um, I feel there's this really lighthearted energy about April, May and June time. And I feel around about July, you get a little bit more serious about responsibilities. But um, I feel, you know, this is a time where uh, you have a lot of fun. OK, uh, now, as we move into June, we've got the temperance card. So this is about you reestablishing a relationship with yourself or parts of yourself that you feel like you've lost touch with. Also, this is uh, an energy of like shaking things up, blending all your energies to get the best out of life. I definitely see that if I was to describe your year, it's almost like you are um, exploring things. or It's almost like I see like a little bubbling pot of stuff, right? Where you're adding a little bit of an ingredient here, a little bit of one here, mixing it all up a little bit and going and tasting and going, mm, okay, it's just missing this and it's missing that. It's almost like you're creating something where it's just right. Okay. But I feel it's like lotions and potions. You're actually trying to blend all these energies so that you get the tone of your life just right. And uh, you are experimenting. That's the word. Experimenting with all that life has to offer. And uh, the temperance card is a card of patience. So there may be some sort of lesson that is taught to you in this month regarding patience. Now, we all get taught about patience sometimes. Um, and it can be frustrating, but also it's wonderful because there is purpose in patience. Sometimes we need to slow down and make sure that we enjoy the moment. So I feel there is a bit of a lesson in the month of June to just enjoy the moment, okay? Because I feel uh, March, April, May are pretty fast months. Uh, now, look at this. We have the Emperor. We have the Lover's Card. Uh, we have the Hermit, we have the Five of Wands, and we have the Knight of Swords. Now, some of you, okay, um, there is a little bit, and this is not going to resonate with everyone, but I have to mention it. If you are looking for love, this person, they may be a little bit more mature than you, a little bit more serious than you. They're very passionate, very intense, very romantic, but also they may be very serious about settling down quite quickly. And I feel like although you want to settle down, I feel like you are taking things slower. So and I feel like you're right to do so. Not that I see anything, you know, wrong with this person at all. But I feel like you're just making sure that you have a solid foundation. OK, so I feel, you know, you're like, OK, I want a life with you. I definitely see a life with you, but we don't have to go so fast. OK, so I feel like this person, um, they're not trying to push or fast track it or force you into a relationship. Definitely not. But I feel there's this energy of this person just knows and then they want to like make it happen. Whereas you're a little bit more organic, like, OK, but I want to get to know you a bit better. I want to because I feel like you've been in a relationship before where perhaps people have, um, you know, tried to fast track a relationship or, um, you know, really be very intense at the beginning. And then it was not sustainable. And I feel like you're slowing the pace a little bit just to make sure that you get uh, the best out of it. OK, so that's coming up there as well. Also, I feel like there may be some sort of age difference. Either you or they are a little bit older. And I feel this may be uh, causing you a little bit of a challenge. Maybe it's something you're not used to. I feel it's really important to recognize, although they've got a different lifestyle than you, uh, I feel like it can still work. OK, so don't let it um, change how you feel about the situation. Now, the Tempers card with the Emperor can indicate that you're going to be very serious this month as well. Uh, you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. So I feel like, you know, administrative tasks, getting stuff done, a mind of business. So I feel like you are really focusing on what needs to get done. Also, I feel like you're, um, you know, when you've got the basically balance card there, I feel like you're making sure that you keep a tight rein on your finances, you're not overspending. And I feel that you are in control. OK, so as I said, you're almost like establishing your power or your relationship with yourself. You're in control. And we've got the lover's card here as well. So this is almost like, you know, some sort of 
how can I put that? It's almost like it carries over from the month of uh, May there. So I feel like you'll be very loved up with somebody, but also you have a lot of responsibilities. So it's almost like saying sometimes you're going to need to withdraw from this, come up for air almost with the um, hermit there in order to focus on your tasks. So this may be a month where you actually try to find balance between all things, you know, uh, your projects, being serious about your tasks at hand, but also having fun, making time. So uh, with the five of wands there, it could cause a little bit of pressure, okay? A little bit of stress, but I feel like you'll creatively find a way to be more time efficient and make everything work. Don't overstretch yourself during this month, okay? I feel it's important uh, there as well. And we've got the Knight of Swords. Uh, I feel like you can communicate with this person back and forth, not lose touch with this person. Um, and I feel, you know, once like your tasks and responsibilities are out of the way, then you can focus a little bit more on, um, you know, people that you care about. Let's put it that way, because it doesn't have to be all about love or a partner. It could be about, you know, friends and family and people that you want to see in the community. So I feel like you may have a lot on in the month um, of um, June there, but you don't lose your head. OK, that's what I literally get from this, even though this figure, uh, you know, there is no head there. But I feel like it's because you are vibing high. You don't have time to stop and think you're just on the go. Now, also, the five of wands can indicate some of you may be working on a project and you need to prioritize. As you can see, this figure is prioritizing who or what is important. OK, it's like strategic month. It's almost like a game of chess where you're making certain moves and you're working out what's best for you. And with that hangman energy, I feel, you know, you are really focusing on, uh, sorry, not hangman, the hermit energy. I feel like you're really focusing on withdrawing in order to focus on what's really important. So it really is a high month for prioritizing um, what's necessary. And um, also I get an energy of lifestyle changes. Okay. That Knight of Swords is like you're responding differently to like pressure. Uh, you're adapting to a new way of thinking. Uh, you're in a swift energy of like not going too quickly with relationships, but at the same time, you're in the flow of responding to your tasks and making sure that everything is flowing as usual in your life, uh, that you're on top of things. But with the Knight of Swords energy, I really get a sense that you change something in the month of June. Um, and I feel it's more about that word no. It keeps coming up here for this card, no. So for example, you're not taking on too much. If someone says, you know, hey, Sag, can you help me out with this? I know that you absolutely want to help them out with it, right? But if you feel that you've got a lot on your plate for yourself, I feel like you're finding a healthy way to say, you know what, I would love to help you out. However, I've got all of this on my plate right now. And once I've dealt with that, I absolutely will come to you and help you with that. But right now, I really got to focus and prioritize on this. So I feel you're adjusting and um, finding a way to diplomatically establish your healthy boundaries without actually being forceful or um, defensive. Because sometimes, you know, especially when we're under a lot of pressure, you know, and someone that we really care about says, oh, could you help me with this? And you're like, oh, you know what? I can't actually because, you know, I got this on. Sometimes we can be a little bit snappy. And that's just human nature because we've got a lot on. And I feel this is your month where you've got a lot on. So balance is necessary. Then we move into the month of July. And this is about reestablishing your beliefs or some sort of traditions. So I feel this is, a, again, a very family-oriented month or soul tribe-oriented month, but also spiritual practices. So after the uh, June period, you may feel that you need to get back into meditation or reestablish your meditation practices or even find time for silence. OK, uh, there's something about sound in this month where you're like, you know what, I need a little bit of quiet time. So I feel that June could be a little bit hectic for you there. Um, now, of course, this card is about learning. So some of you may actually decide to go back to university or to college, or you may even like uh, decide to teach what you know, because you're very gifted and very talented. The magician card tells me that you are super uh, talented and gifted, that actually you're very creative as well. So if, for example, you are uh, extremely knowledgeable in some area of your life or career or craft, I feel like you could actually create like a course of learning online for people to uh, you know, download and you are financially recompensed for it as well. So I feel a second stream of income, passive income energy coming from this card as well. But some of you are wanting to increase your knowledge. So you may actually put yourself on a course of learning or even, you know, um, 
absorb yourself in like books or reading in this month too. So let me just pull a card. I mean, also, if you're in a high level commitment with someone, this is a high potential month for you to actually, you know, get married. Seal the deal. Uh, July and August are really great months for you to actually get married. So uh, some of you, I mean, of course, you would have already organized that. Some of you beautiful Sagittarians have already, uh, you know, booked the date in July or August to get married. I mean, you could get married at any point during the year, but I feel that uh, some of you, you know, you're going to get the best weather during this time um, for that date. That's what's uh, coming through there as well. Four Swords rest after a very hectic time. As you can see there, all the feathers are uh, like floating down, which kind of indicates like intense action or being in a bit of a flutter. And that's what's happening for you in June. But July is the relax month, okay? But it's also a card of getting really comfortable with uncertainty of things like happening suddenly in your life. And I feel like it's gonna be a lot of sudden things. I mean, the, the moon represents you know, uncertainty or transformation, change. And I really feel something change is big in your month of June there for you. And the Four of Swords is to relax after that. It also indicates you're protected during uh, any difficult times. I don't see anything difficult happening here. I feel like you find your flow, but also you find your clarity. This is quiet time, quiet month for you. And I feel some of you may even uh, take a break to take care of yourself. Now, that doesn't have to come in the form of, a, uh, you know, a vacation. It can, you know, be that you're going to take a day out for you or a weekend out for you. And you're just going to potter around and just enjoy your own company. So I feel this is a month of really reestablishing who you are, what you want. And also the Four of Swords, you know, this is about getting major closure on any deals or projects. It's really connecting a little bit more to sleep, to reflection, but solitude as well there. Okay. Um, so I feel it's a quieter month, but it's also one where you're like learning or absorbing information. So, um, you know, even though it's quiet time, you could kick back with a good book, relax, find yourself in the flow of going to a gallery or getting out into nature, uh, that sort of thing. As we move into August, we've got the um, Justice card, which is all about making adjustments, but it's also about cause and effect. You know, all the action that you took at the beginning of the year, starting to see the results. So I definitely see that happening there for you as well. Now, this could also be a decision-making month for you, okay? Um, you know, you are very cerebral this month, really thinking with your intellect, uh, making sure that you make fair decisions based on who you are, what you want, but also, you know, on people around you. I feel that you're marching to the beat of your own drum. You're not adhering to other people's expectations, but at the same time, I feel like you're factoring them in, okay, to your plans in some way. Uh, also, the Justice card, again, I feel like there's like uh, tasks to be done. I know it sounds like you're going to be very busy this year, maybe for Sagittarians. No wonder you need to take like a month or two rest in between. But I definitely get an energy here of you like uh, dealing with contracts. I mean, it could literally be something as simple as you change your internet provider or, you know, a subscription comes to an end and you're deciding to maybe should I, you know, renew it or maybe I should cut it out. What should I do? I feel like there's decisions to be made in this month uh, and you get a better deal. Every uh, month I'm getting this energy of you getting a better deal or shopping around for stuff as well. So some of you may actually sign contracts in this month as well. So it could be, uh, especially if you're getting married, of course, you'd be signing a contract there. There may be some extra paperwork that comes in after that um, that you have to sign. But also, uh, you may need to change things like your surname, if that's what you're doing, or um, maybe you're having an addition to your surname because you've just married someone. Uh, some of you may even like um, seal the deal on property, real estate during this month. Or um, you may even hear, um, because we've got the Hierophant in the month of July, there may be some sort of restructure in establishment. So if you're in a career or an environment where you work um, and you want to level up, I definitely see that this year holds uh, a lot of promise for promotion and raise and bonuses for you. But there may be some sort of restructure when it comes to, um, you know, businesses. And there is a high potential that a merge could happen or there may be a new contract on offer for you to sign. And if you've been in a career for a long time, just make sure that you are covered with all your benefits and stipulations of everything that went before. Because as soon as you sign a new contract, it means everything that went before is nullified. 
and you want to make sure that you get the best deal for you. And sometimes when companies merge, um, you know, it can be that new management comes in and they change hours or they change pay or they change benefits in some way. And you just want to make sure you read the small print. Okay, so uh, I would uh, keep your eye on everything, especially since, you know, uh, this, of course, is like a kestrel in this particular card, but it almost looks like this card here has like, a, you know, a monocle. So perhaps, you know, the month of um, July and August, you need to keep your eye on something. And I mean, it could also be in terms of world events, because the uh, Hierophant means establishment. And of course, the justice card is to get justice. So you may hear of someone who's in a position of power. Suddenly justice is done and, um, you know, they get their karma for something that perhaps they did that was not very good. Or um, you uh, may even hear of someone in your own personal life who gets karma on something um, because this is a high potential month for you to get some really great karma for you. Uh, remember karma, uh, this year is uh, run by Saturn, which is the retribution planet. So if you've been good, you're getting some good. If you've been like not so good, then perhaps like, you know, reckon that perhaps you're going to get a little bit of karma for that as well. So I just want you to be aware. Now, this is a great month for you. Okay, this is September and the star energy, a wish coming true, but also aligning yourself with new wishes. This is a renewal of hope. The star energy, um, I feel, is, of course, about healing. So if there's something that you've been looking at long term, um, I feel like you keep up the healing because I, there's something at the beginning of the year where either there's an ailment or something that's been bothering you. It's almost like you correct it in some way and it doesn't really return. And then we've got the star energy, which is about you stepping into the spotlight in some way. Uh, this could be recognition for uh, a job well done. It could also be uh, a prize that you win in this month. So for example, if you go to like a local fair and they do like a raffle, you could win it. Or if you're going to a work event or a work do and they have some sort of event, you may win something here in this month. Also, the star energy is there is a brighter future to look forward to. You're really clear about where you're taking your life and you're seeing that success is showing up for you, that actually you've aligned yourself and you're making an impact in your life in some way. So this is a very prosperous month for you. A lot of abundance here, manifestations showing up, um, but also it's more about a new phase of life. So it's almost like this is your second second start to the year. Okay, I know it sounds really weird, but it seems like a second start to the year for you uh, this month. So it could be all change in some area. I mean, you could adopt a new way of doing something or embrace a new idea. There's a lot of inspiration this month. So it could be that you're branching out if you're an entrepreneur, um, or you are actually um, being seen. Uh, and some of you want to be like in the public eye, for example, uh, this is a prime month for you to get a lucrative job or deal that puts you in the spotlight in front of everybody. Okay, so I feel this is a time where you could also get an award or, um, you know, some sort of great news, a success energy coming through there for you. And um, I'm also getting an energy here of progress, reputation, and uh, yeah, de definitely recognition on a goal. So let me just pull a quick card on that for you. Thank you so much for it, guys. Great angels, can you please guide? The tower, isn't that really interesting? The next card over is the tower for you. So it could be that you're seeing things clearly of, um, you know, situations in your life that are not stable or, you know, people who do not invest in your life. Um, you know, you're really looking at it. It's almost like you may even have a vision you know, a psychic vision, a moment of sheer clarity about um, something that is potentially, um, how can I put that? Um, potentially an upheaval or something that could appear in your life by surprise that could rock your foundation. Okay, I will pull a card on the uh, tower to see what that is. It's almost like you get a premonition, perhaps, of something that, or even a hunch, an intuitive moment where you're like, hmm. And remember, as I said, at the um, end of the year, we've got to look out for those placements. So it could be in terms of world events that you have, like, especially since we have, the, yeah, look at that, the world, the emperor, the devil card. Oof. Um, but interesting. You've got some of the same cards popping out, okay? So 
We've got the Knight of Swords there, lifestyle change. We've got the Hermit energy. We've got the Five of Wands, and we got the Lovers card. So it can also mean that something that you challenged yourself uh, to do, or uh, that you tried to implement, it could be that you actually uh, have a major breakthrough on it, and suddenly it's like really positive. So. It could be a milestone for you in some way. Uh, for some of you, it could be to do with your aesthetics, something that perhaps you have been tempted to have in your life for quite some time, but you've cut it out completely. But I do also feel like major world events during that time, there's something a little bit restrictive or how can I put that? Um, you know, there's a power play. That's, that's what I can see. There's a power play at the end of the year. And the timeline with planetary alignments also indicates that as well. Uh, we got the world there, of course. We've got the emperor and we've got the devil card. So there could be something um, that has the potential to shake foundations. For example, you know, with all these earthquakes, I mean, it could be that there's like a major earthquake round about this time as well. And um, yeah, so just watch out for that. I mean, we can't do anything about the earthquakes, okay? Uh, Mother Nature, when she's angry, she's angry. But also everything's about change and shifting tectonic plates and things like that. You know, adjustments. Even the world has to make adjustments. And we get caught up in the adjustments. So, um, but I feel it's something to watch out for there. Um, now... Of course, the world card can also indicate you're really like having a check-in. You know, you're reorganizing your life in some way. There's an energy of restructure. So it could be that you're in control of the tower because I feel like you are identifying where you feel stuck because the devil card, it's not an evil card. It's to highlight where you feel stuck. So this could be a major check-in month where you take control and say, okay, have I accomplished what I wanted to do? I feel like there's many moments in your life in the month of 2024 where you've accomplished quite a bit, but you're wondering where you're still stuck. So we all have that moment throughout the year where we kind of go, mm, okay, um, now I need to do this because I need to change. So I feel this could be a month where it's all change and you're in control of the changes. We've got these cards showing up for you again. So I feel, you know, a lifestyle change there, um, the hermit energy. So this could be a spiritual awakening energy for you where you transcend higher than ever before. A sudden epiphany moment because the tower represents epiphanies and sudden realizations on how you are living your life or how pressure could have the potential to shape your world or to break your world. Okay, because, you know, sometimes when we're under pressure, if you have a deadline, for example, sometimes people work better under pressure or they don't. And you have to realize which one you are in order to get the best out of the situation. But the lover's card at the end tells me that everything comes together for you. Could be a manifestation that shows up for you. Could also be that, um, I mean, you may hear of someone like separating, you know, like a power couple, someone that you thought would never separate. There could be the potential friction there and there may be a potential separation for a while. But with the star present, it's something that gets healed. OK, so it tells me that uh, there may be a little bit of a bump in the road for a relationship there, but it gets healed and it gets worked through. So um, I feel like there's, you know, um, it's resolvable there as well. Now we do move into uh, October where we've got the tower and because that's shown up already for another sign, this could be, as I said, world events. We've already discussed this, but I feel like you're prepared for restructure. Okay, so I definitely see, you know, you reorganizing your life in some way, but also this is a card of liberating yourself out of the stuck situation. Okay, uh, I mean, also, it could be that you're tempted to um, return to something that perhaps you cut out of your life. But also, I feel you recognize that if you did, it would really like um, pull down everything that you worked for. So I feel actually you're prepared for it and you, you don't do it. I feel like um, you avoid it um, is what I feel there as well. But I feel this is a major change month for you as well. But it's not like a beginning of a year change. You know, um, I feel like you've got two of those where something starts for you. It feels like renewal energy. So let me just clarify this tower for you. We have three of swords. King of pentacles. Oof. Okay. Now, 
if I'm talking in global terms and what I mentioned about the planetary alignments, there could be some sort of painful financial event that occurs there. These two cards, King of Pentacles, money uh, oriented ambition and uh, three of swords. So this could be a month where you have a premonition about some sort of financial arrangement and it puts you in a really good position to avoid disaster or avoid some sort of bump in the road. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to occur then, but the situation, the circumstances are very similar to a past event. Uh, Three of Swords can also indicate uh, that something is difficult this month, okay? But with the King of Pentacles, it means you protect your position. King of Pentacles is very serious, you know, practical energy. So um, I feel that you, um, you know, find a way to get through this. I feel like, you know, this could also indicate that success that was hard won is really sweet because you worked really hard for it and you turned pain to gain. That's what these two cards literally mean there. But the Three of Swords can indicate that this will be a very difficult month, not just for you, but for the collective. And uh, with the King of Pentacles, I feel like you protect your position. Um, also, I feel like you actually make um, more money somehow, okay? You are smart with your finances, and I feel like you got good business know-how or intuition. And I feel like some of you may even pay it forward to a friend who is going through a hard time during this time. I mean, it could be that you hear about, uh, you know, your friend um, going through a separation and you are offering comfort and solace for that person. They can rely on you in this month. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of respect here and you offer protection, um, a shoulder to cry on for someone in the month of um, October there as well. Uh, the fact that the King of Pentacles is present for you, it means that you're in a really strong position, okay? Even though there may be something said to you that hurts, someone wounds you, you know, Three of Swords, Swords are all about communication, words. So I feel like, you know, if I was really looking at this, these two as a combination, it can be like words, you know, they have the power to wound you, but at the same time, you're really comfortable in who you are and you're not allowing anyone to change your inner world or your inner energy or even how you feel about yourself. So I feel like your boundaries are really high and you respect yourself. You're looking at people or situations that are toxic or have the potential to uh, derail you from your path. And, you know, you're really respecting yourself and saying, no, I'm not allowing that to happen. Now, as you move through the month of November, we got the strength card. So I feel like you're strong enough to uh, deal with whatever wobble this is at the end of the year. You've got this. Also, I feel this is a card of self-care, but it's also about being bold and daring. So you could be using the energy from this tower, which is a shake up, shaking foundations to, you know, establish yourself to do something exciting and new. So I feel like you have the potential to tap into that reconstruction energy where you get to rebuild stronger and better than ever before. This is you being a real force to be reckoned with. I mean, it could even indicate that you are powerfully putting yourself in a position to do something new and you'll shock people around you with, um, you know, how you live your life or how you uh, gain success in some way. Um, for some of you, if you are, like, as I said, wanting to be famous or you have, like, um, social media platforms, they could go viral and they could shock you. And suddenly you're thrust into the limelight and people look at you differently. They may approach you in the street, ask you for your autograph. Suddenly your life changes in a major way and you deal with it. So I feel this is a big uh, sort of end to the month for you. It's like a major climax month. And um, I feel like you break the chains. I mean... The tower can represent like a prison, okay? Feeling stuck in some area and suddenly needing a leap of faith to liberate yourself out of that stuck situation. And this strength card, as you can see, this line is breaking the chains. So you're definitely empowered to uh, not be restricted in any shape or form. And if there are any potential restrictions at the end of the year, I feel November, you break free from them and say, no, I'm not doing that. Um, now, Let's just go and pull a card on that strength card. I mean, your last card of the year is the Empress. So that's about you, you know, feeling comfortable in your own skin, having a lot of abundance, looking back on the year and thinking, you know what, there was a lot of hard work, but there was also a lot of abundance. I feel like you're looking back proud of yourself. And strength card, Queen of Cups, in love with life, opening your heart. It's interesting, I'm getting a song right now. Okay. Um, now, this is a very famous song. Uh, it's by the Fifth Dimension. Uh, let the sun shine. Let the sun shine. Let the sun shine. Uh, 
open up your heart, let it shine on in. Okay, so this is a very famous song. They've given you those lyrics in particular. This is about being open hearted. This is, um, you know, I mean, let the sun shine. I mean, you don't have the sun card showing up for you this year here. So I feel like it's that you're ready to open up to opportunity, uh, opening up to love. I feel like you're ready for everything that life has to offer. And if you can see there, that Queen of Cups, uh, Queen of Cups is all about uh, self-care, self-love, healer energy. So some of you may even step into a healer role in uh, the month of November there as well, okay? Um, or some of you may even decide to go into a caring profession. But ultimately, the Strength card and the Queen of Cups means self-care, looking after yourself, your own needs, um, and reestablishing your power, recharging your batteries as well. I'm just going to go one more. Uh, the death card. Okay. So that's transforming yourself in some way. Um, I mean, it could also be that you're winding down the year because, you know, you're in that new phase. The death card is one door opening as another door closes. So also I get a sense here as well of uh, you looking at overgiving. Because the Queen of Cups, there's a cautionary tale with the Queen of Cups, which is uh, she tends to be very compassionate, a lot of empathy. And again, male or female, not a gender specific reading. It's about the energy, but tends to open uh, herself up to overgiving. And I feel with the death card, you're reestablishing boundaries and saying, no, you're blossoming. And I feel like you're letting yourself shine as well there. Um, now, we do have the Empress right at the end of the year. So that means that you're taking stock of everything. Uh, you're nurturing yourself and nourishing yourself in a healthy way. But also I feel there's an energy of pride here, uh, of comfort, as I said. Well, I feel this coziness. I feel I think I said it at the beginning is like coziness rather than comfort because comfort can like move into the realm of complacency or getting so comfortable that, you know, you don't try anything new, but I feel that's not you at all. Uh, this is a card that indicates a lot of abundance comes your way. I mean, you're going to be very busy throughout the whole of the year. Uh, this card also indicates more productivity and uh, nurturing new ideas or bursting with new ideas. I mean, some of you as well, there's a high potential uh, that you could uh, get pregnant during this month or give birth during this month as well, um, if you've been pregnant throughout the year. But uh, this is more about, you know, your potential and looking at how well the year went and looking at 2025 with more potential, thinking, you know what, there's more to come. So I definitely see that there is a lot of wealth on its way for you this year. You've got the King of Pentacles there. Um, we've got the Eight of Pentacles as well. So you're focusing on yourself in the month of December. I mean, from November to December, of course, it's your birthday month. So it stands to reason that you are attracting a lot of attention. It's all about you and um, that you are um, perhaps uh, focusing on learning a little bit more. You're looking at the lessons that you learned in 2024. Also, there may be a little bit of repair work going on in the month of December. Something may break down. I don't like to give that message, but uh, it is coming through there as well. But I feel like you're connecting to creativity, recognizing that you're a master or a mistress of your craft and seeing that actually you've done a really great job. Some of you may also look back on how you upskilled uh, Five of Swords, you turn pain to gain, okay? I feel with the Five of Swords there, you learned a lesson or you took a lesson with you and you blossomed despite the difficulty, okay? If anyone tried to push your buttons, I feel like you're putting your own needs first and you're ignoring anyone who's like super selfish or trying to create drama or conflict in some way. Yes, the world is an unfair place sometimes, but I feel... You're finding a place in your world where you can romanticize the world a little bit more and where you can accomplish what you set out to do. And I definitely see, I mean, this year is the year of eight. And the fact that you leave on a number eight is really, really positive indeed. Uh, eight is an indication that there are infinite possibilities for you to tap into. Uh, also, I would say roundabout... Um, the end of November into December, just watch out with your immune system. I mean, I feel the majority of uh, December, you're kind of like full steam ahead. Uh, you are uh, at your personal best. You're glowing and you're attracting a lot of attention as well. And you're inspired. Uh, but I feel there is a potential there um, just on that cusp for you to get a seasonal cold. So just watch out for that. Um, 
let's get some final cards before we close your reading. We've got courage and patience. Okay, as I said, uh, you may learn a little bit of a lesson about patience around about June time for you there. Let me just get a final card before we close. Um, I do apologize for the readings being longer than usual, but you know, it is a yearly, so I'm giving you like an in-depth reading of the energy throughout the year so that you are aware of how to use the energy that's available to you in every given moment. Um, I feel like you're just trying lots of new things and um, I feel that's really going to set you up for a win. We have courage, moving past the fear. And it says here, the right mindset, taking steps, standing out, helping others and credit. So uh, definitely a very positive uh, energy showing up there for you. Patience, uh, your work is rewarded. And it says steady going, planting your feet, unstoppable and great passion. And that already came out in your reading. This is a highly passionate, intense year for you expressing yourself and leading uh, with your passions as well. Remembering, now that did come up there as well. It's a second card to indicate this. People and events from the past, knowledge from past lives, memories from the past. And you're going to see lots of signs and symbols. They're giving me an image right now of, um, and I feel this could be an indication uh, of a, a person in spirit trying to get a message to you that they are around you, that they love you. Um, they're showing me like a lead crystal faceted ball. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird. I don't know if you've ever seen that program on TV. It's called like uh, Crystal Maze. Okay, interesting that it's Crystal Maze because, you know, Life is a bit of a maze. We go down one route and think, mm, that wasn't the way. Let's take a turn back and find the way. And suddenly we're in the center and we're accomplishing great things. So it's about the journey. But, uh, you know, they have those little uh, crystal ball type things. Okay. Uh, it's like a golf ball, but it's like faceted. It's got, I don't even know what the shape of it's called. Okay. There's so many different sides to it. Um, but I'm being given here like lead crystal. Okay, so this could be relevant in some way. I'm being given that um, you're going to be more time efficient, prosperous, um, continuous energy and effort into grabbing successful moments with your effort is what I'm being given. Uh, calm energy, uh, being in the rhythm of life. And also I'm being given that uh, lead crystal or lead rather um, is synonymous with Saturn. And this is a year that we're governed by Saturn. So you're going to actually harness that energy to make things work in your favor. So, uh, I mean, the fact that they're showing me that it may be a symbol or a sign that you're going to see. I mean, I highly doubt you're going to find one of those on the sidewalk, uh, but it could happen, you know, um, but it could also mean, I mean, when you think about that crystal, it could be a sign or a symbol, something you're going to see. Um, oh, thank you so much. I'm truly grateful. Um, I'm just being given that it's called a sun catcher. And the fact that you just, I just got true chills. The fact that you um, got that song as well, listen out for that song. You may hear that a lot throughout 2024, let the sun in. So now you're like going out there to find opportunity and you're going to be very successful with that. So I'm not sure how else that's relevant. I mean, if you think about that crystal maze game thing um, where people go in and do like different tasks and they get like a crystal, so it could be like you do lots of different tasks throughout the year and each time you get the crystal. So you get the, you know, you buy time and that time gets people to get all this money or something at the end. I'm not sure what it is. So I feel you're being really precise with your time and lots of opportunities your way. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there because I'm not sure how else to decode that. Uh, we have Victorious. This is your final card. So it says here, beating your competition and your enemies, overcoming obstacles, success and power. So a great month ahead. Yes, there are some twists and turns. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. You even feel it yourself. But I feel like you are in a really strong position. Plus, you have your ancestors, a long line of them walking by your side, empowering you along the way as well. And you can feel it. Really interesting. Every sign is only getting one rune, which is really odd. Um, so you have the wheel rune. This is all about your journey, okay? Being on the right path, taking the right action, controlling your destiny. It could be more about your career as well. Uh, if you're retired, it's more about where you feel like you belong in the world. And uh, also lots of opportunist moments coming in. I mean, also lots of messengers. Uh, it could be in the form of people. Good news coming in as well. Um, and I feel like reward for your effort is the main energy. And anything that's been delayed actually um, comes towards you quicker than usual this year. 
um, it starts to show up for you. So I'll leave it there. I hope something resonates in that reading for you. If it does, please like or subscribe to my channel. Completely free for you. All you have to do is press a little bell that lets you know when I update my next message. It lets me know that you resonate with the reading, which is so important for me too. Thank you so much, my beautiful Sagittarians, and love and light.